Hi, uh, today we will discuss force load paths. Uh, the force or load is just like a flow that it should follow a certain path. Just like water, we need to know the flow of forces in structure. Uh, last time we were able to discuss the uh, forces of nature and now we would like to know how these forces are uh, transferred from one point to the other. Just like the tug of war, uh, the two persons are pulling each other. And as you can see, uh, if you pull, and the reaction will be uh, opposite. And at the same time, uh, your feet will also be uh, having uh, reactions. If a uh, the corresponding uh, force F A prime. This uh, two forces should always be of equal magnitude, but in opposite direction, so that it will be in equilibrium. We have uh, the hanging weight. We discussed this one uh, earlier, and if you have to, to uh, reverse it, balihon instead of having tension my emotion uh, compression what will happen uh, initially we have this block this block has its own weight w5 and the size of the block should uh, have some reactions we have this reaction here and another reaction here if we use the force falling on the weight and then this reaction and the yellow one it will be in equilibrium since it, uh, the polygon closes it should be in equilibrium and then this reaction should be transferred to the other blocks the same analysis until the force will be transferred at the support which is in compression so with on the other side the forces from this block will be transferred there going this direction as you will notice uh, this is quite stable because the, the blocks follows the or the, the load path follows within the structure. Pero magawas ganin ni siya may kiningalin niya magawas siya dari. Then the structure will not become stable. Matumpa siya. So dapat uh, your line of force, this uh, path of the force should be within the structure. Going back to the port bridge, which is a cantilever railway bridge, uh, there are two supports. Uh, this is the first truss with two cantilevers, another truss with two cantilevers with a weight at the middle. Assuming this is the weight, and it should be transferred to the other side. And tension, the uh, tension, so katunga siya sa weight W, that's W over 2. This force, if we have to look at this portion, at this junction, this force uh, is going down. So the hand of this person will be in tension and the strut here that he is holding should be in compression. So my transfer is a peak as compression the retention. So with on the other side because there is a weight here. So this uh, string should be in tension. So his arm again will be in tension and the strut here should be in compression. And the whole human body is in compression. And these forces will be transferred to the support here. So it on the other side it should be transferred. As you will see, the reaction here, killing a weight, is quite different. This is not compression but in tension. So so the load on the port bridge was transferred from the center towards the arms to the struts to the body up to the uh, support. Also we have this arc bridge designed by Santiago Calatrava. Uh, as you can see, uh, the forces or the moving loads usually a mga truck or I think this is a uh, pedestrian bridge so ang mga tao the, the human will induce forces. Assuming the force is uniformly distributed, this force will be transferred to this cable in tension. Morning blue area. By the way, the blue colors are tension and the red colors are red arrows are cooperation. 
So the the force uh, due to human or the moving loads or any moving loads will be transferred to these suspenders in tension, and then it will be transferred to the arc. The arc will carry in compression, which will transfer it to towards this direction to the support. The support it will uh, carry compression or forces upward. Uh, forces on the horizontal aside from that uh, flow of the force the the deck of the bridge getting to balance mga tao, will also experience tension at the bottom compression at the top because it's, it's the same as a, a beam so, bent pa na siya. Pag bent na niya, tension dere compression so that's that's how the forces on our bridge are distributed so normally from the top the forces will be uh, transferred towards the foundation for a suspension bridge we have this uh, <laughs> a nice picture of the suspension bridge the tower are carried by uh, the gorilla and then at the end uh, this is pulled by the elephant uh, so just imagine this one uh, the elephant is falling so this uh, is in tension and since this is the center span quite long, uh, just like the the arc bridge, the forces are transferred from the bridge deck to the suspenders and towards the tendons. Can uh, The arc, and then it should be in tension and transferred uh, in the gorilla in compression, and then the gorilla will transfer the force to the foundation the putting and then to the foundation so here you will see the illustration in terms of the transfer of loads from the road deck uniformly distributed transfers as uh, vertical suspenders then transfers as a uh, main cable in tension then it should be transferred in the tower which is also in compression transferred into the foundation and so with this portion this is in tension uh, which should be carried by this dead man. So in general, for cable stay and suspension bridges, uh, normally the loads are taken from the bridge sticks. You can see the sakyanan, you can see transverse is a bridge stick, and it's a bridge stick. It will be transferred to the stringers. The stringers will transfer it to the floor beams. Then the floor beams transfer it to the uh, suspenders or the, this uh, cables getting a suspend uh, getting a stay during a cable or getting a vertical yeah and then it should be transferred to the main arc or to the tower directly and then to the tower to the foundation aside from that we have got deliver bracket supporting pipes this is a truss system um, what happened happen to the the forces on the stress. As you can see, we have the diagram, and normally uh, we want to convert this into our structural model. Uh, normally, we use in our structural models a uh, stick model. So, these uh, elements of the truss should be changed with the stick model, and we assume that the connections of the truss elements are pin connected, meaning there will be no bending, it's free to rotate, so only vertical and horizontal forces involved so this is either intention or compression so as we drew the structural model we have this stick models and then the corresponding force due to these pipes uh, carried by the uh, truss so it is assumed here to to be in uh, hence support and air hence support so how these forces are transferred to the support so you can imagine if we uh, i like this one this illustration by uh, seward uh, he tried to change the the member uh, into human uh, as you can see if there is a human here uh, what will happen is it in compression or tension according to this diagram we cannot automatically think uh, so it should be in tension uh, so one of blues yeah. 
Uh, but anyway, in the analysis of trusses, you will learn later on, it's not really important that you know the direction. Uh, because even if you are wrong in your assumption, uh, the result will tell you if it is wrong or right through the sign of the assumption. If it is positive, then you are right. If it is negative, then it's just the opposite. But I like the idea that we, uh, you will feel uh, what the force here. It should be tension or compression because automatically when you design, pas pas kaya makabalik. So aside from this uh, member, the force will be transferred also to this member. The uh, can you imagine if this is tension, tension, then with this person here, <laughs> most probably it should be in compression. Tulod niya. Uh, so this is compression and transferred to the other joint compression during tension uh, then next it's either at C or D uh, at this portion at D uh, we try to change this uh, element with the human and as you can see this, since this is a vertical force here then most probably this is in tension so we try to write tension here and then uh, we have to transfer it the other side uh, placing another human here as you can imagine there are two forces here so most probably this is in compression so we try to put the compression force and then the other force will be transferred here uh, uh, since there are two forces here oh, possibly this is in tension yeah. and lastly this uh, member BC uh, tension dito tension the tension dealing with the attention tenant so here, as you can see in the model, it is in compression. So three of the members are in tension and three of them are in compression. But we successfully uh, transferred the force from uh, point D and point E towards the uh, thrust elements to the support. So here, this is in compression, attention, uh, the tension, compression, so compression, so that in the reaction, we will transfer it the tension Bira siya dito, pag-abot dito sa support, bira gito siya. Then dito, i-compress niya dito, itulod, dito ipataas, paupos siya. Ayan. So it's important that you know how to transfer the force from these joints to the support because the, the design of support is different. So, so much for that. Uh, normally, uh, in frame structures, we have different elements taken from the slab to the beam to the gear there to the column towards the putting and the foundation normally we should be able to know the vertical load path of the structure as you will know uh, we struggle to uh, to tackle with the gravity gravity will always be vertically uh, downward the yang direction so the force or the load path should be taken from the highest level towards the support so here you can see the hierarchy of the load pad the vertical load pad it should be from the slab transferred to the beams then to the girders which is larger than this beam then the load will be transferred to the columns the columns to the foundation to the putting and then the foundation so here uh, you can easily observe if you apply here or kung sakyan ni modere uh, your weight will be transferred to the slab and your weight will be transferred to the beam and the, your weight and the weight of the slab will be transferred to the gear there here and then the forces in the gear there will be transferred to the putting and the forces in the putting to the uh, no, the column to the putting uh, sorry for that you can say gear there paying on the column then to the putting and the foundation yeah, you should really understand this one because this is important, uh, very important in, in our analysis and design. You should be able to determine the load path of your structure. So here we have this frame structure example. As you can see, uh, uh, if you have the surface load or the linear load or a point load, uh, tau, uh, actually there's really no point load. Just like us, really, mong get point atong gitindugan, di ba? There is a certain portion, but normally we can just assume uh, atong gitindugan kamera, and we can just assume a point load. Also, we have the surface load, 
and the linear loads. These loads should be transferred uh, to the slab and then the forces of the slab will be transferred to the surrounding beams na may mga beams na support and then these forces uh, applied to the beams will be transferred to the columns. Here, as you can see, the force will be uh, transferred to the putting and then to the ground. So, yung na lang siya. Uh, of course, the, the, the problem is, kung sa kadako mga force matransfer. Uh, na lang siya. And that's our main topic of structural analysis, how we will do it. But uh, it's quite intuitive actually. If the force is near to the support, then more forces will be carried by the support. During a side, kailayo man siya, gamay rapod yung force. Yung na lang naman. And through intuition and uh, with the proper computations, you will see the the quantities in both. And you can use that one in your design. So here we have an example. Uh, a three-story building with a roof uh, here. Now see mga beams. And the beams are carried by four columns. Then this two columns will be transferred to the transfer girder then the load will be transferred to the two external columns so uh, the load path is actually that uh, from the roof beams and these are uniformly distributed loads the roof beams will be transferred to this column kining roof beam the load is transferred to this column kining roof beam will be transferred to here and the other side so with this roof beam uh, here and the other column then, tuloy-tuloy na siya i-transfer niya. And then, pag niya din sa transfer gear there, the force will be transferred to that one. Also with this one. Uh, you may think, uh, sir, naman siguro po din na, uh, because of this position, but most of the forces will be transferred here, na i-gamay din. Uh, most of the forces will be transferred here, na ako i-gamay din. So, pariyara. <laughs> Katong kay symmetrical naman siya. So, katong force na yung i-transfer din yung din, pariyara. So, pero actually, in reality, some of the forces will be transferred here and the other here. But this is quite a simplified illustration so that it will be transferred to the external uh, columns, then to the foundation. This is very important because when you design the frames, you should be able to understand uh, the transfer of forces. Dili bang kung mag-compute that it's Imagine nun sa ninyo asi siya pa yun. So that uh, mas efficient ang yung pag-design sa structural system. If you know where the forces will uh, will palo. Also, we have a lateral load path. Uh, this is uh, due to soil pressure. Normally, it is triangular. This force due to the soil pressure on the foundation wall will be transferred to the priming from floor above and so with the basement slab. Ang uban nga force, i-transfer niya dere, ang uban dere. So, diretso na siya sa putting. Pero ang uban will be transferred to the putting above, uh, framing above, then it should be transferred to the wall or the, the column to the uh, putting. For the lateral load path hierarchy, uh, normally it's, it's taken from the out of plane wall if hangin siya, maagi siya sa hapakon niyang out of plane wall, then it should be transferred by diaphragm or directly to the putting. And if it is transferred to the diagram, it, will, it should be transferred to the vertical lateral force resisting system. Normally, the column or the in-plane uh, shear wall, then it will be transferred to the putting and foundation. So here is an example, an illustration. This is typical lateral load resisting system for buildings. If this is the the wall and there is a wind, hapakon niyang out of plane na wall, kini siya. This is the weak portion of the wall, out of plane. Ang in plane dere, na side, kini out of plane. So the out of plane force uh, on the wall will be transferred at the top. This is assumed to be diaphragm or at the foundation. So half of it, will be transferred to the foundation, the other half will be transferred to the diaphragm. And these forces will be uh, transferred to the diaphragm and the diaphragm will transfer it to the in-plane shear wall, this VLFRS. Uh, as it transfer it to the shear wall, the, the force will be transferred to the putting, then to the foundation. So as you can see, here is the illustration. Katungana niya, there is a It will be transferred as W to the diaphragm 
and then the diaphragm will carry the the forces you to share uh, um, more shake reactions at you know then transfer share there is a in plane shear wall uh, look at the directions and then it will be transferred at the foundation so in this case for uh, a more detailed one gikan uh, sa wall uh, the wall will be carried by the girds horizontal beams and the girds is connected to the column winds, uh, wind columns, and the vertical column during. So the forces will be transferred from the cladding to the girds, and then girds to the wind columns. Either the force will be transferred to the uh, putting, or the other one will be transferred to the diaphragm, and from the diaphragm transferred to the end plane shear wall, then to the putting. Also, we have a lateral system designation change depending on which direction the load is applied. Of course, pwede man nga dere ang hangin, pwede po dere nga side. So, kung dere ang hangin, parihara out of plane, transfer niya sa uh, uh, shear wall dere kining doa. Kung dere po ng hangin, this would be the out of plane, uh, the shear wall would be this too. So, here are the different classes of VLFRS, the shear wall system the moment resisting frame, the frame, uh, brace frames, and the dual systems using combination of these two. So the first diagram will show the shear wall. Uh, the applied shear on the top, and then transfer it to the putting. We also have the moment resisting frame. This is quite common sa to ah, makita ninyo. If you have a rigid frame, the applied shear will be transferred to the beams, and this will be transferred to the columns, then to the putting. Or we can have a brace frame. Dili siya rigid ang connection sa framing, but there is a bracing here. Uh, if you have to apply the shear, then this bra brace will carry the other forces. This is intention. And then the other will be transferred to the putting, from the column to the putting, or from the uh, brace to the putting. Uh, sometimes uh, they put some bracing here cross bracing na if this is intention what if the applied shear is in the other direction in the opposite so the bracing here will carry that one assuming that this bracing can only carry tension then sa imong analysis ibali wala lang na imong isa also a combination of the uh, moment resisting frame and a shear wall we call it a dual system so uh, some of the applied shear will be transferred to the force just like this one to the column and then to the putting but others can be transferred to the shear wall to, to the putting and the two remaining columns. Uh, the forces will be transferred here and then to the putting. So that's how we transfer the forces for the, the gravity and the lateral force on uh, frame structures. Here is the, the old uh, system, the, the cathedral, the Paris Notre Dame Cathedral. As you can see, uh, this is the portion akong ginaingon sa inyo ngayon ng hapog kayo. Niwang siya. So, kinibugat. If you just follow this one, mahuk na ni siya. So, what they did is they put some buttress. Kini siya. Uh, transfer nila ang force, the compression force to the buttress. Uh, as you can see, kini mga pulang uh, aro, this is in compression. So, the columns and the buttresses are in compression. Ayan, transfer nila. So that's why it can carry the uh, the loading and then transfer it to putting. So this is very, very nice uh, illustration on how the forces are, the gravity uh, forces are uh, transferred from the top portion to the foundation. But it's quite different if you have to apply a lateral load. So this is the lateral load part of the cathedral, as you can see na change siya gigan sa pula na ngayon mong green o blue. Kung saan mo yung blue, this is uh, compression due to lateral force. Compression due lateral. Green is the tension in lateral reaction. So, mo siya ang tension. Most open for the gravity load, these are in compression. Pero, as you can see, the compression portion becomes uh, tension. So, yung na this is portion of the Noyon Cathedral in France. As you can see, if you apply uh, 
gravity forces these gravity forces will be uh, applied to the arc as the compression and then transferred to the uh, putting as you can see uh, this is what we are discussing with the shell uh, pag medyo yung radius of curvature ba gamay liko na siya sa compression pero kung halos flat ang radius of curvature uh, matension na siya mga hook no? so uh, it's not good but this design is quite uh, efficient aside from the gravity forces if you have to apply uh, lateral force uh, suddenly the forces uh, on this portion will be in tension so the force will be transferred by tension here uh, you can see the transfer tension and tension here to go into putting so the tension here will be transferred here and it becomes compression then compression then the rena foundation so here you will see uh, the sudden changes of the direction of the forces but the important thing is the forces are transferred from uh, the location of the force application to the putting so here is half of a portion of the cathedral the gravitational uh, force as you can see is in compression yeah this is the load path of the compressive forces to the cathedral uh, if you have to apply lateral forces some portions will be in tension some will be in compression so as you can see getting a portion will be in tension this one tension 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 but still the forces are transferred from here towards the the compression side to the foundation transfer so that's why this uh, battery should be uh, wide enough to carry both tension and compression or kung may mo gamay ragad nga tension dili ra kita because the stones are good in compression not in tension so in a summary uh, for beams uh, normally the beams if it's just for gravity mo bend siya ana so sa ubos ana tension sa ibabaw compression so that's why the bottom is blue red ang ibabaw that is compression and the force will be transferred to the column in compression for the arcs uh, purely compression you can see the transfer paying on supporting the put sa bigas for the suspension bridges we have the uh, bridge deck tension sa bus compression sa taas and the transfer to the vertical suspenders then transfer sa main cable in tension then transfer to the to the tower as the compression sa cable state mao ra ang bridge deck niya tension sa bus compression sa taas then uh, the forces will be transferred to the cable state member in tension and then may mong compression ng tower Ayan. for the trusses uh, ang ako lang ipakita sa inyo is maraman to siya cantilever na truss so ang taas ang tension so ubos ang compression but normally if you have two supports if you apply gravity load here ang ubos ang ilan ang tension maray siya kinig beam ang ubos niya tension ang ibabaw compression so as you can see uh, if you have to apply gravity forces ang ubos tan ng blue so that is in tension some of the vertical members are tension and ang ibabaw ng cord sa truss are in compression and the vertical uh, components are in compression also depending on the configuration of the truss uh, manggawas ka na and lastly the cantilever structure uh, the port bridge makita ninyo gikan sa bridge transfer niya ang tension then transfer niya sa sa tower ang compressive forces and so with the bracing niya to the foundation okay so i hope you you understand how the forces are the load pads are transferred it's very important that you need to understand that one so that uh, it would be uh, you can design a more efficient and effective uh, framing system for a certain structure that's all. Thank you for listening.